Assalamu alaikum, Eid Mubarak. My name is Roger Bissesso. And on behalf of the Ahmadiyya Anjamani Shati Islam Incorporated of Trinidad and Tobago, I'd like to welcome you to our special Eid program. First of all, we we'll now have Maulana Mustafa Kemal Haidal, religious head, leading us and giving the sermon. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasoola. Amma baad. فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أسقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحالها يوم إذ يصدر الناس أشتاة ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مسقول زرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مسقول زرة شرا يرى صدق الله العظيم I bear witness that there is one God, Allah. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is the last, the final messenger of Allah, after whom no Prophet old or new will come. And I begin in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. I have read in Arabic the entire chapter 99 of the Quran. It is entitled Al-Zilzal, the agitation or the upheaval. The translation is as follows. When the earth quakes with its agitation and the earth brings forth its treasures, the human being says, what is happening to it? This is a period. It will indicate anew its data as if your nurturer has revealed to it. This is a period human beings will emerge as divergent groups to analyze their behavior. Thus, whoever performs the weight of an atom in goodness will recognize it. So too, whoever performs the weight of an atom in wickedness will also recognize it. It is almost one year now that the world is suffering the effects of the pandemic. People have had their lives shaken up in many ways. In managing the spread of the virus, great hope was placed on the directives of political leaders. Greater hope was placed on the ratteries of pharmaceutical companies to produce a vaccine. Both seem to fall short of containing the disease, especially as new variation, variants pop up. Eventually, religious leaders are also now calling upon their followers to pray to God to remove the deadly illness. But we ask, whose prayers are more effective, the leaders or the followers? The leaders may be paragons of righteousness, but that may not be true of the many followers. Will Allah heed the prayers of those believers who neglect him or who are indifferent to the performance of their duties to him? But we also question, is the virus the work of God or the creation of human beings? As many think, if human beings, as those who don't believe in God would indicate, if human beings have created this pandemic, could we call upon God to remove that situation for which he is not responsible? But if the virus has come from Allah, does he not know when to bring an end to its spread? Or is he awaiting our prayers before he acts? But then, 
Are our prayers to bring about a new norm? Or are they for everyone to return to, return to the old norm? Should we ask Allah to remove this deadly affliction so that human beings can go back to their dependence on alcohol and narcotic consumption and other bad behavior such as ill treatment of women and children and the poor? Will our prayers to God result in people returning to ignorance and the denial of his existence, indecency, gambling, dishonesty, murder, robbery, internecine, warfare, abuse of power, denial of human rights to the handicapped, and all of these are often justified in modern society in the name of democracy or freedom. We do not deny the effectiveness of the spiritual elements, and we do not deny that the hygienic guidelines do work in containing the disease. But what have you done to make the world aware of the beauty of Islam during so much available time? Our prayers to God must be for all of us to bring the world together to live in peace and harmony. This requires Islam to be understood and practiced by us as a religion of peace, not hostility. Peace on earth is established only when a person is sent by Allah for this purpose. When Allah sends someone, a great upheaval shakes the world. A great upheaval shakes the world's view of itself, its outlook, its attitudes, its behavior, and its thinking. Without such a shaking, centuries of wrong attitudes, bad habits, cruel behavior, etc., cannot be removed. This upheaval or shaking brings a new world order and gives human civilization a new life. This coronavirus is a warning and an eye-opener from God. The world has experienced a great shaking and upheaval. The Quran assures us that when the earth, when the people of the earth quakes with its agitation, it will bring forth its treasures. Allah wants the hearts of every human being to turn to truth, to accept Muhammad as a messenger of God, and so to receive the divine blessings. In this way, the earth will be filled with good and virtuous men and women, regardless of religious persuasion. The Quran informs us. Do you think that you will experience happiness without experiences like what befell those who passed away before you? Distress and affliction befell them and they were shaken violently. So that the messenger, those who believe with him said, when will the help of Allah come? Now surely the help of Allah is near. Years of centuries, years and centuries of bad habits and wrong beliefs cannot change without a shaking. The more asleep a person is, the greater the shaking needs to wake him or her up. So until a people is shaken violently, centuries of corrupt tradition, superstition, and wrong behavior cannot be removed. The more firm a rock or tree is, the greater is the force or explosion needed to root it out. Earthquakes unearth treasures not only from the physical earth, but also from the human behavior, as we see in the response of loving and caring neighbors and friends. When there are challenges and difficulties, we see the beauty and the treasures in our friends and neighbors as they respond to help us and, situations and assist us, regardless of their religious persuasion or sex or age of uh, status in life. The treasures of the earth we see in a physical sense are extracted when unearthed through violent shaking, as we see in mining operations. Precious metals are unearthed in abundance when dynamite is used to blast them out. The deeper entrenched a problem is, the greater is the shaking required to root it out. Trials and difficulties in life shake us, but they also rouse a person out of slumber. The deeper the sleep, the more vigorous the shaking needed to awake the sleeper. 
Otherwise, he or she may fall back asleep. We even use a powerful electric shock to revive patients at death's door. So for Islam to replace centuries-old entrenched false teachings and decay of moral values, a mighty shaking is needed. When the human mind is shaken, it discloses its hidden talents. When a person is in difficulty, in a crisis, in a dilemma, he or she brings out the best in himself or herself. This is the experience we observe of a student about to write an examination. But let's look at the time of the Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Had it not been for the trials and difficulties and hardships of the Prophet Muhammad and his companions, we would not have known of their patience, bravery, courage, sacrifices, faith, righteousness, steadfastness, noble character, and generosity, forgiveness, etc. Their excellence came about because of the trauma of the opposition they faced. The Quran is a unique book. It cannot be surpassed in science and in the knowledge of, system, knowledge of systems of character development, of human resource management, of governance, of relations between nations and races, religions and gender, etc. The tool of fasting in the month of Ramadan helped Muslims to manage their lives during the closure of restaurants and food places during the pandemic. It is quite obvious that the world has a problem with gluttony, as the obesity statistics show. Islam teaches us that if we don't control our passions, they will control us. So we cannot pray and sing praises to Allah while our mouths are being used to engorge and overindulge in our appetite. And that is why fasting is an indication to us that we can praise our Creator more with less of nutrients and food in our bodies. All religions teach us the significance of this fast. Many people give thanks to God only when they are blessed with plenty. The Quran teaches us that all religions promote that there are greater blessings in the discipline of fasting. The sacrifices required during this pandemic is an opportunity for Muslims to be torchbearers of science, culture, and religion, and to be champions of peace and unity among all human beings. The Quran teaches us that the hidden talents are manifested in a crisis, and that when the world is shaken, two kinds of people come forth. Firstly, those who are so shaken, they wake up to their responsibility to do good, to perform good deeds, to help others, to care for others. And secondly, those who are shaken up so much so that their evil ways are dismantled and abandoned. With the upheaval that Islam brought in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, we see the Arab nation was transformed from bestiality and barbarism to civilization and learning. Righteousness, restraint, respect, harmony, love, tolerance, faith, the sacrifice of wealth, health and life, bravery, all of these and more were the hidden talents that were unearthed when Islam shook Arabia and later on the world. Islam's objective is to develop righteous character among all peoples. We have seen that many world wars brought about much material inventions and progress, but did little, but did little for moral and spiritual development. Today's sacrifices of soldiers as they go to war only bring about a freedom which may or may not bring about higher human qualities. The two Christian world wars of the 20th century brought about much material inventions and progress, but did little for moral and spiritual development. The challenges Islam faced today can only bring about the best, in, uh, about the best Muslim minds only when they ponder upon these messages of the Quran. The strength of the Muslim community lies not in the cement that holds the blocks of the large and beautiful masjids. The strength of the Muslim community lies in the love that must exist between us and among us. The love that we must have 
for one another. We don't need to change our religion for this. We don't need to change or abandon our, abandon our jamaats to achieve this. We don't need to give up the organization that we may belong to to realize this. We only need to change our attitude towards one another and love one another and live in peace and harmony. Not only the scholars of Islam will create this shaking to produce more love and harmony among Muslims and among all human beings, but every sincere Muslim by following the Quran can also trigger it off. After a year of hardships during this pandemic, what has the trauma produced? Only a vaccine? We have experienced the power of science, but have we also experienced the power of Allah, the power of God? Is the pandemic God's blessings to the hungry and the unemployed? Or is, it, or is it his blessing only to the pharmaceutical companies that are raking in billions? If we pray to Allah to remove the pandemic, the big pharmaceutical companies will go bust. And they will never allow this to happen. Sadly, competition has replaced cooperation. Islam teaches us that the purpose of acquiring material wealth, prosperity, knowledge, health and affluence is to spend all of these in the doing of good actions towards others, to develop the spiritual aspect of our own personality as well as theirs. The victory of Islam is not to prove that God answers our prayers in removing the deadly disease. The victory of Islam is that all human beings increase in the worship of Allah. The proof of the truth of Islam is not in having Allah remove our afflictions. The proof of the truth of Islam is having human beings remove their opposition to Allah, their opposition to God, and to increase in their faith and devotion to him. That should be our prayers. That should be our action to bring human beings in service to their creator. God has no desire to unjustly destroy people. As long as people believe appropriately, says the Quran. Indeed, it gives us the example of Jonah's people escaping distress when they believed, when they changed their ways. The object of Islam then is not to increase the number of Muslims, but to develop true and righteous character among all peoples, all human beings. O people of the world, let us serve none but Allah. True religion is the life we live, not the creed that we profess. True religion is the life we live, not the creed that we profess. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa naf'ana wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikr al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawadun kareem malikun barru for rahim Alhamdulillahi na'hmadu wa nasainahu wa nastagfiruhu wa nomenu bihi wa ntawakalu alayhi wa na'uzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina may yahdihillahu falamudilla lahu wa may yulilhu falahadiyala wa nashadu allah ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasoola Allahumma ansur man nasara deena muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ajalna minhum اللهم اغزل من خزل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجل منهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم ودوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر اللهم صلي الله محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك الله محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد والله هل those who had the religion of Muhammad the grace and blessings of Allah be upon him and count us among them والله frustrate the plans of those who try to disgrace the religion of Muhammad the grace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and let us not be from among them. Praise be to Allah. We praise him, we employ his aid as we seek his protection. 
We have confidence in him. We put all our trust in him. We seek refuge in Allah from unkindness in ourselves and from the ill effects of our behavior. Whomsoever Allah guides, none shall lead him or her astray. Whomsoever Allah finds in error, none shall guide him or her. We all bear witness that there is no God. No God is there but Allah, we want one without partner. We also bear testimony that Muhammad is his servant and messenger, bringing an end to the chain of all the prophets of God, the founders of great religions who have been sent by God for the regeneration and upliftment of humanity. I seek refuge now in Allah from all the negative forces which are cast from outside in the name of Allah who incessantly bestows and who continuously rewards. May you have a very pleasant and enjoyable Eid. Eid Mubarak. Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Ayasi so sunuki pe kurra Haku milita nahi kapi in the sun. Ayasi so sunuki pe kurra Haku milita nahi kapi in the sun. Jinko sanura ki kapar hi nahi Un pe usayar ki nasar hi nahi Hey furka ka ek cheep asar Open ata Hey ashiki til pair Hey asi so suno ke pe kurra Hako milita nahi kabi in the sun Dil me har waat anu da pair tahe Sine ko koop saaf karta hai Uske aur saaf kya karu me baya Wo to deta hai ja ko aur ek jaan E yasi so suno ki pe kurra Hako milita nahi kabi in the sun Wo to chamaka hai neri akbar Usse nakar ho sake kyu kar Pehre hikmat hai wo kalamat maam Ishqe haq ka pila raha hai jam Wo hame dil sita talak laya Uske paane se yaar ko paaya Hey, Azizo, suno ke pe kurra Haku milita nahi kabi in the sun Hey, Azizo, suno ke pe kurra Haku milita nahi kabi in the sun Hako milita nahi kabi in the sun. Translation. Listen, O oh my dear ones, without the Quran, a man can never find God. Those who are not aware of this light of the Quran cannot have their beloved set his eyes on them. A marvelous quality of the Quran is that it makes one a lover of the beloved God. It fills the heart all the time with light and cleanses the breast of all impurities. 
How can I describe the qualities of the Quran? It surely imparts a new life to life. It shines like a great sun. How can one deny its radiance? All its revelation is like the sea of wisdom. It constantly offers the cup of divine love to the seeker. The Quran has brought us right to the threshold of the sweetheart. We found our beloved when we found the Quran. Amin. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Eid Mubarak. We have just completed the holy month of Ramadan, and it has indeed been a Ramadan with a difference. Traditionally, there are two core components of the holy month of Ramadan. One, a personal side for personal development, and the second component, the congregational side. The first aspect, one, personal development. During the month, an individual spends time fasting, meditating, praying, and using that time to achieve closest to Almighty Allah, uses it as a period of introspection and self-development. The second aspect of it, the congregational component. During the holy month of Ramadan, traditionally, the mosque would be filled. You know, we'd have iftar, you'd have tarawih namaz. But with the pandemic, it has been a Ramadan with a difference. Perhaps as we scale back on our celebrations during this pandemic, some of the funds we may have used for personal celebrations at our homes, we can look to sharing it, with, sharing it with those who may need a little bit of happiness in their lives. Look to your left and look to your right, to your neighbors, to friends, to families, to those who are facing challenges, economic, financial, and otherwise during this pandemic, and give a little more. Even though we may have given during Ramadan, allocate some of those funds to those, as I say, you know, who would have normally come to our homes or those who may be in need. On behalf of the president, on behalf of the executive, and on behalf of the members of the Ahmadiyya Anjuman Ishati Islam Incorporated of Trinidad and Tobago, we want to wish you all Eid Mubarak. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Chara ke dil ke jalawo ke Eid ka din hai. Chara ke dil ke jalawo ke Eid ka din hai. तराने ईद के गांवों के ईद का दिन है तराने ईद के गांवों के ईद का दिन है चराग दिल के जलावों के ईद का दिन है चराग दिल के जलावों के ईद का दिन है गमो को दिल से भुलाओ के ईद का दिन है गमो को दिल से भुलाओ के ईद का दिन है गमो को दिल से भुलाओ के ईद का दिन है खुशी की बजम सजाओ के ईद का दिन है खुशी की बजम सजाओ के ईद का दिन है तराने ईद के गांवों के ईद का दिन है तराने ईद के गांवों के ईद का दिन है चराग दिल के जलावों के ईद का दिन है चराग दिल के जलावों के ईद का दिन है खुशा की आज है सजदा नवाज शौक कोई खुशा की आज है सजदा नवाज शौक कोई खुशा की आज है सजदा नवाज शौक कोई सर नियाज झुकावो के ईद का दिन है सर नियाज झुकाओ के ईद का दिन है 
तरान ईद के गाओ के ईद का दिन है तरान ईद के गाओ के ईद का दिन है चराग दिल के जलाओ के ईद का दिन है चराग दिल के जलाओ के ईद का दिन है